Hi kids! These sets of notes will cover sections 8.2 and 8.3. 8.2 is over similarity. The essential question is how can I use proportions to find missing side lengths and similar figures? So to understand similarity we need to understand what similar figures are. Similar figures are not congruent at all so we've done a lot with congruency over the year but now we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. Similar figures they have the same shape but they're different sizes like a big one and a little one. They are formed by something called dilations and when we do our project the six weeks um, we will be doing dilations. A dilation is when you either enlarge a shape or reduce the size of the shape. So let's look at an example. Let's suppose that these two triangles are similar. When you've got similar shapes, the corresponding angles are congruent. So I'm going to tell you that Y corresponds with A, those are congruent. K corresponds with B, those are congruent. S corresponds with D, those are congruent. So the angles are going to be congruent just like they are in congruent figures, but the sides are what's not congruent here. The symbol for similar is just one little wiggle. It's just this little wiggle guy. So it's kind of like our congruent symbol, but we're taking the equal sign off. So the way we would write a similarity statement, which is similar to a congruent statement, we would say we would name one triangle or whatever the shape is. So the one on the left, maybe we could call triangle KYS. We would say it's similar to triangle and when we name the other triangle on the right, we need to make sure that corresponding vertices line up, just like we would do when they were congruent. So K goes with B, Y goes with A, and S goes with D. So this is an example of a, a uh, excuse me, similarity statement. Now we're also going to state all the things that we can state from knowing that we've got similar shapes. Like I said, the corresponding angles are congruent. So that is the same as with congruent shapes. So we can say angle K is congruent to angle B. Angle Y is congruent to angle A. And angle S is congruent to angle D. Now the sides are not going to be congruent, but the way that the sides relate to one another will be the same. So what we can do with the sides that correspond is make ratios. Um, and these ratios should all be equal. So for example, KY, this side, corresponds to BA, this side. So I can make a ratio with those two numbers, whatever they equal. It doesn't matter which one I put on top, but however I decide, I need to be consistent with my other ratios for my other sides. So I'm just going to put the side from the left triangle on top. So I would say KY over BA, here's a ratio of corresponding sides, that will be equal to the ratio of the other corresponding sides. Let's take a look at YS and AD. I'm going to make a ratio with those two sides, but I'm going to do it the same way that I made my first ratio. I'm going to put the left triangle side length on top. So YS over AD, this ratio is congruent to the first ratio. We have one more ratio because we have one more pair of sides. That's KS and BD, and if I'm being consistent, I'm going to put the KS on top of the BD. So these are all of the things that we can say are true about these two similar triangles. All of the angles are congruent and the ratio of the corresponding sides are congruent. I would definitely write that down. So the corresponding angles are going to be congruent, their measures are equal, and the ratios of corresponding sides are equal. Make sure that you don't think that the corresponding sides are equal. It's only their ratios that are equal.
Okay, so let's try an example using some similar shapes. It says triangle BAT is similar to triangle DOT, and then it gives us some lengths. So the very first thing that we want to do is probably make sure that we understand how they're similar. These triangles are not oriented the same way, so it could be helpful to redraw them so that they are, so it's easier to see what goes with what. But let's go ahead and label what we've got first. Um, OT is 15. That's this distance right here. You can barely see that, sorry. BT is 12. And TD is 9. And we need to find the length of AO, this short distance right here. Maybe we'll just call that X. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better to see, easier to see. Okay, so I'm going to redraw them so that they're oriented the same way. BAT says is similar to DOT. Um, the links that we know, we know that BT is 12, that's this distance. We know that TD is 9. That's this distance. And we know that B, I'm sorry, we know that OT is 15. That's this distance. We're trying to find the length of AO. Well, AO is not on this picture. Let's go back up to the top picture. AO is the distance, it's part of the distance from A to T. It's this distance right here. The 15 was this bottom part of AT. The whole length of AT we could say is 15 plus X and we can put that right here. If we could solve for X then we would know the distance of AO. So some of you are probably wondering about that second triangle I drew down here. In order to make it look like that what we had to do is we had to rotate it and then we had to flip it. So we had to flip it. And when you do both of those, then it looks like the one down at the bottom. Okay, so now I can see what corresponds with what. I'm also just going to make it a little bit more clear. I'm going to use my similarity statement to look at the angles. B goes with D. A goes with O, just so I can make sure that I drew it properly. And then T, of course, goes with itself. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got four expressions. And I've got expressions for similar sides. So we can make ratios with those. And because we will be able to make two ratios, we can set up a proportion which will allow us to solve for what we're trying to find, which is X, which represents AO in our original picture. So according to the pictures that I redrew, 15 plus X goes with 15, so I can make a ratio. I can either do 15 plus X over 15, or 15 over 15 plus X. It's totally up to you. Just make sure that you are consistent, and I'm going to pick a different color. Okay, so let's say I do 15 plus X over 15, then for my other two sides, the 12 and the 9, I need to be consistent. I need to put the 12 over the 9 because I put the 15 plus X on top of the other one. Okay, so here's our proportion. All we need to do is solve for X. We are going to start by cross multiplying. Make sure that you put the 15 plus X in parentheses so that you know when you cross multiply it with the 9 that you remember to distribute the 9. So we've got 15 times 12 as one of our cross products. Our other cross product is 9 times 15 plus X. And we always know that cross products are equal. So all we have to do now is solve. First thing we're going to do is distribute the 9. We can also do the 15 times 12, which is 180. 9 times 15 is 135. 
plus 9 times x is 9x. Okay, we'll move the 135 to the other side by subtracting. We get 45 on one side, 9x on the other, so the last step is just to divide by 9, which gives us 5 for the value of x. And if we look back at our original picture, x was the length of AO, so we can say AO equals 5. That's similarity. 8.3 talks about the different methods of proving triangles similar. Uh, this is kind of similar to when we were proving triangles congruent using SSS, SAS, or ASA, or HL, but we have some different postulates and theorems that go with similar. So our essential question is how can I show that triangles are similar using AAA, AA, SSS similarity, or SAS similarity? Notice these similar symbols after. It's not the same as SSS and SAS for congruent triangles. We're going to use these similarity postulates and theorems. The first one says that if we have AAA, then the triangles are similar. So, for example, if I was to draw a picture, I got a big triangle, I got a little triangle. If I know that I've got a pair of congruent angles, I've got another pair of congruent angles, and I've got a third pair of congruent angles, then I can say these two triangles are similar. The cool thing is we don't have to do these in proofs. Yay! The next one says if we have AA, two pairs of congruent angles, then the triangles are similar. So this one is called just AA. We don't have to know that all three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. We can explain that one very easily. So again, let's say we've got two triangles. I've got two pairs of corresponding congruent angles. I don't know anything about the third angle, but if you remember us talking last chapter, if two angles are congruent to the corresponding other two angles of another triangle, the third angles have to also be congruent. So this AA is kind of the same thing as AAA. This is all you need to know to say that these two triangles are similar. This next one is called SSS similarity. Make sure that you realize it's got that similarity symbol after the SSS. It says if all three ratios of corresponding sides are equal, which means they're proportional, then the triangles are congruent. So let's try an example. Or let's just see what this might look like. So I've got two triangles. Let's call one of them ABC, the other one XYZ. If I can take their corresponding sides and make proportions and show that all, sorry, and make ratios and show that all three ratios are equal, then we know that these two triangles are similar. So for example, if I make a ratio with AB and XY, and I make a ratio with BC and YZ, and I make another ratio, a third ratio with AC and XC, and I can show that these are all equal then that means these two triangles are similar. Alright, here's the last postulate. It's called SAS similarity. It says if two ratios of corresponding sides are equal, so not three, just two, which means they're proportional, and the included angles, the ones between those two sides, are congruent, then the triangles are similar. So let's see how that might look. I've got two triangles. Let's call one BMZ. We'll call the other one ACD. So we're going to pick two sides that um, are corresponding, maybe BZ and AD. Maybe we know something about those two sides. 
I'm going to make a ratio with them. And then I want to make a ratio with another two sides, maybe MZ and CD. If I can show that those are equal, which means they're proportional, and that their included angles are congruent, their included angles would be angle Z and angle D. If I could show that angle Z is congruent to angle D. Then, by SAS similarity, these two triangles are similar. Okay, here's our last example. So we've got a situation. It says that sides of one triangle are 8, 14, and 12, and sides of another triangle are 18, 21, and 12. Show that they are similar. So the first thing we probably want to do is to draw a picture. If they're similar, I mean they're going to have the same shape, but they're going to be different sizes. The way that you draw your triangles is not important. But the place that we put the side links is important. Um, they didn't say that these side links were respectively, which means they go with each other. Like the 8 doesn't necessarily go with 18 just because they're both first. So what we want to do is we want to look at small, medium, large. We're going to put the two small sides together first, which are the 8 and the 12. Then we're going to look at the medium sides. It's going to be the 12 from the first triangle and the 18 from the second triangle. So 12 and 18. It doesn't matter which pair of corresponding sides I put them on, but they just need to go together, correspond. And then the largest sides from each triangle are going to be the 14 and the 21. So those two kind of need to go together. Okay, so since we're told something about all three sides, we might want to try to use the side-side-side similarity, the SSS similarity. So in order to show that they are similar, we're going to make ratios with these three pairs of corresponding sides. Let's go ahead and start with our small sides. We've got 8 and 12. And like I said before, it doesn't matter how which number goes on top of the ratio as long as you're consistent with your other ratios, as long as they kind of match. I'm just going to do the left triangle over the right triangle. So 8 over 12 is one ratio. If I look at my medium sides, that's the 12 and the 18. And if I look at the large sides, that's 14 and 21. We need to show that these three equal each other. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You could convert each fraction to a decimal. You could reduce each fraction and see if they all reduce to the same fraction. Or you could do this cross-multiply thing, which is going to take a long time. So let, I'm not going to show you that way. The easiest thing when you have fractions is just reduce them. If you have decimals within your fractions, it's probably going to be easier to convert those fractions to decimals. So if I look at 8 twelfths, I can divide the top and the bottom both by 4, which is going to give me 2 thirds. If I look at 12 eighteenths, I can divide the top and the bottom both by 6, which will also give me 2 thirds. Oh, and if I look at 14 and 21, I can divide both of those by 7, which is also going to give me 2 thirds. So because they all reduce to the same fraction, that means the three ratios are equal. And because they're equal, that means that these two triangles are similar by SSS similarity. And that's it. So if you would like to work ahead and start on the problems that are associated with these sections, you may. For 8.2, you will do numbers 5, 9 through 13, 18. For 8.3, you'll do numbers 8, 10, 18, 19, 22. Otherwise, you can just wait until we do these in class. I'll see you later.